Oh, I thought we'd take a look at a few of the uh, first resin 3D prints. Um, when I first set it up, one of the first things I did was some of the files that came uh, on the on the card that came with it, the USB stick, and uh, a file that I'd made, and then another file that I found on Thingiverse that everyone seems to print because it shows up the detail. But uh, I made this really small. If the camera focuses, as you can see by the size of my finger, it is very small. And all of the uh, steps that are inside there are visible, and the little twisted vine type things up the center, they're all in there, and the text around the base is all in there. I mean, it's just uh, super nice if we can get the camera to stay in focus. So, that, that test turned out good. Then there's this little, uh, yeah, I can't read it with my eyes because I made it so small. If you can see the text, then you should be able to read it. And it's just a good test to see how well things are working because there's so much fine, minute detail. And as I was uh, air blowing it off, it blew out of my hand and flew across the room and landed on the cement floor out in the shop and broke off this piece here which I then put some more gray resin on and cured but again because it's so small and I can't see all that well I didn't quite get it lined up right but it was mint up until <laughs> up until I blasted it across the room with air then there's uh, some sort of strange test that Frozen provides and uh, it apparently shows different layer heights of detail there. It has some text which again I cannot read with my naked eyes. It's just too small and some different holes and because it's a thin flat platform it is of course warped. As everyone tells you, you can't pull anything non-warp basically off one of these resin printers that's that thin. So then I printed um, my Rat Sphinx which is something I made a year or two ago and put on Thingiverse. I grabbed a, a file of a Sphinx on a base and then replaced the face with a Rat Sphinx file that I found on Thingiverse and uh, made a Rat Sphinx and I thought why not finally print it? And I printed it hollow, so I used the hollow out tool in the uh, Tutu box so I could drain the uh, resin out after it was done printing. It turned out quite good. So, then I moved on to taking a project which I'd already done, which is the uh, easel back robots, which I'd done on the FDM printers. And I, the files, of course, I'd done multiple times, so I knew they worked perfectly fine. So I tried them on the resin printer, and things kind of went as expected. Not not too well, but um, there's three or four body pieces that you don't see here that were all failures for different reasons. But because I don't want the warping, because I need these perfectly flat sides so that the body halves can fit together, that meant I was going to have to print it flat on the build plate. Well, on a resin printer, the build plate's on top, like that. And that introduces a few problems. For example, this big flat area in here, which on a FDM printer, a filament printer, is no problem at all. It does what they call bridging. It just goes between the two places and forms that. comes out clean. Everything's within spec. Well, on a resin printer, when you're printing flat, that becomes a flat surface because remember this is on the build plate up above and it's lowering down on the resin and zapping a, a thing then raising then lowering down and zapping a thing. That first flat surface gets pulled because it's got to pull away from the FEP film that stays on the printer. When it gets pulled it stretches and pulls it and then when it comes back down it kind of reinflates that really thin layer of resin I think I printed these at 0.1, not all that thin, but even if I'd printed them at 0.05, which is the standard setting, 
um, it just would have made it thinner. So anyway, it makes a little bubble thing and, and grabs a pocket of resin and this whole part in here becomes bubbled up. It happens in here and here and here and all up in there. So when the part is all done printing and I've cleaned most of the glop off, I then have to go in and scrape out as much of that balloon type area and get the resin out of there as possible, cure it, and then go back in with a Dremel and finish the cleanup job. So it adds a whole lot of hand labor to the process. And uh, also because you have some Z scrunch that seems to happen on resin printers, you have to uh, add, in my case I'd added, uh, well I didn't add all that much, I think I only added 5%, so 0 0.5 in height or something for what I figured I'd be losing. This one's waiting for some parts so I can assemble it and test it. This one, as you can see, is going to have four screw mounting hole positions. And I added holes in the bottom between the legs for draining resin out when it's on the build plate. And this one, initially I had only had the bottom screw hole and the top screw hole, just the two. So I ended up adding two more near the arms since the arms have to screw in and the body splits. It just, of course, wants to separate. So I figured a couple more screws would be good to hold things together better. And this came first. It was the gray resin and when I kind of was getting really low on the gray then I grabbed a little jug of uh, the salmon com colored resin that came from any cubic with the wash cure station. Figured I'd just give it a try and see how it went. But um, So basically I put a couple of flashing leads in the eyes in there. Step up booster because it's just a single uh, AAA battery. And it walks like the other easel backs did. You have your walking action and then the easel back that holds things upright. Now, the other thing about this is, is resin is so much heavier. You know, when you, when you print on the FDM printer in filament, you select how much infill you want. Most of the mechanical parts I print in there, I print it 20%. If it's something really skimpy or something like one, like this part here, I may print it 100%. But the resin, you don't have that choice. It's going to always be printing at 100%. So areas like these parts here, which I couldn't really hollow out because it was going to interfere with these inner structures, add a lot of weight. This part isn't all that heavy. This part is a lot heavier because this part here is actually quite a ways in from there. Now I could hollow that out some, but it causes a problem with the 3D printing where I'd have to add uh, supports. Here it prints on a resin print like this. I'd have to add supports in there, which of course I did try printing these with supports, without supports, with rafts, without rafts, extended off the bed, on the bed. And right now I actually have one out there printing at a 45 degree angle um, on the, from the build plate and let's let it put all the support material it wanted on there and we'll see how that turns out when it gets done or if it turns out. But um, it makes it adds a lot of weight. In fact it adds enough weight that it throws the balance of the this toy off where I had to extend the easel back part by about six millimeters longer. So there's more of a tip forward on this robot than the ones that came off the FDM. They stood a little bit more upright. But without that extra tip, the thing gets unstable because of all the weight and tends to want to want to fall. So there's kind of a close-up of how the first resin mechanical prints have come along so far. Maybe I didn't get close enough so you could actually see. I mean, I could have added even more detail now that it's going on a resin printer and not on the FDM, because these files were designed for the FDM. We have kind of a limited amount of detail that you can put before things become a problem. I did change one thing in the file. See, this hole is a little bit off-center. I didn't notice that when I printed this part, so I went back in and have centered it so it's moved over uh, one millimeter. So the part that's printing right now out in the shop, again, if it works, uh, should have this, this hole centered. It's a screw hole, so it's not all that important. It lines up anyway. 
Okay, I think I think that's about it for the first prints. Uh, you just might want to see close up or as close as I can get the camera to go and, and stay in focus. And I can't tell for sure with the little viewfinder whether uh, everything is in focus or not. If you want to make a rat fink, sphink, rat sphinx, it's up on Thingiverse. You can find it. If you just type uh, Robot Hut into the uh, search bar on Thingiverse, it'll bring up all the different things, well, almost all the different things that I have up there. doesn't quite get them all. Things weren't absolutely perfect. There you can kind of see the stair steps. Again, I mean, I could have made these bigger. M my point was I wanted to see just how small I could make it and if everything would uh, end up being in there and work. And it did. And it's impressive. I mean, get a hand back here for it to focus on. Look at that little teeny village. Even from the top, you can see it gets down and gets all the detail. Alright, talk to you later.